the spoils have been shared between Slovenia and Denmark. That's how Group C stands. And of course, the second match taking place a little later this evening, Serbia against England. And uh, Didi, I was just thinking that possibly that result might suit England, but in another way, you know, I mean, both of those sides now have plenty to play for, and yeah. so will be giving it everything they can when they meet England. Yeah, that's right. I don't think England is too bothered or, or wasn't too bothered about the result. Uh, they will try to win all the games, but um, yeah, Denmark better in the first half. I loved uh, Slovenia's reaction in the second half yeah. because, as we mentioned at half time, they, they still fancy a chance. They had the moments going forward in the first half, um, made a couple of, of wrong decisions, but they showed a lot more urgency at the back. Um, and the intent they had in the first half, they showed it even more in the second half. And uh, in the end, they deserve the point. You know, you can probably make a case maybe deserve to get all three because the better yeah. chances were probably Slovenia's. Yeah, and we saw Šesko shine Ritchie. Uh, he's a real goal threat, didn't score today, but you'd, you'd fancy him to score during this tournament, that's for sure. But, but they were a threat, particularly late on in that second half, weren't they? Absolutely. They finished the stronger of the two, certainly. And beforehand, we, we, you know, we bigged it up that it was a, two teams, not much between them, but both of them had young centre-forwards that a huge amount was being expected of. And, and yeah. Shevsko looked the livelier, looked the brighter. Um, disappointed he didn't score, but the shot, particularly in the second half where he hit the post, was, was outstanding. Hoyland, on the other hand, had an opportunity to, to, to put the team, put a 2 0, which would have, I think, seen off civilians. But absolutely, you see these scenes, they deserve the point. Absolutely. Yeah, great result uh, for Slovenia. And so this group could be a whole lot tighter than many people imagined when it was initially drawn. Now made up for them because it's easy when you you play against a very experienced side and, and you, you you know that Eriksen goal it was pretty much out of nothing. But the way he finishes takes the ball down and then just gets a little flick into the far uh, corner. And then the second half starts. You don't really get a get a chance, and it's very easy to throw the towel and to say, oh, maybe this is a step too far. Even though we played them in qualifying, we finished level on points. But this is a tournament. They've been there before. They've done it. They've been to the semis last time. Maybe it's a step too far for is it? Because it's easy. The easiest thing is to fold. But they said, no, no. We dig in here and we try. And the way they finished the game was absolutely outstanding. Yeah. I, uh, I've got my team for the Euros now. All right. Um, <laughs> You're outside, so, um, ch your outside yeah, chance, aren't they? Pro <laughs> probably going home next week, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in fairness, I suppose when you think of their most recent meetings, which was in the quali qualifying uh, series, Richie, I mean, they only lost 2 1 in Denmark and uh, they drew at home. So, I mean, there wasn't going to be a whole lot in it. The, the, absolutely. There was, there was, there's not a great deal between those two teams at all. They're very, very similar. And while Slovenia were trying to assess their character and what do we learn from their second half performance. They're clearly together and, and, and plucky and they didn't give up. But I think if you look at that Denmark team from this angle, they lack a, a, a ruthlessness. Do you, know, do you know when you're on top of a game and, and you know that whether irrespective of the scoreline, you know your opposition aren't on their game. They're, they're, they're slow to react to breaking balls. They're not aggressive when you've the ball. They're not closing you down. You're creating opportunities at ease and there's no real presence in midfield and they're not creating much against you. That was the summary of the first half. And you just think, like, we, we have a foot in their throats here. Go out and bury them. Just create chances and bury them. We didn't see that. We didn't see that. They kind of created the circumstances that allowed a kind of resurgent performance in Slovenia, which is what they gave. And when they conceded the goal... They could have conceded moments earlier, but the goal, they can whinge about the deflection all they like, but overall, the civilians absolutely deserve the draw. Yeah, do you think the, the physical aspect of the game had anything to do with it from a Danish point of view, the fact that they might have tired a little as that game wore on? Because Slovenia came more into mm. it, looked the fitter team, mm. looked the more determined team to try and get something out of the game as it wore on. Well, I think when it comes to these, these tournaments, I think it comes, it's all about game management. And as Richie said, you've got to, when you're on top, you've got to score. And when you're not on top, when you're under pressure, you've got to stick together and try to ride that wave and see that you get maybe one or two free kicks and slow the game down before it... Before the, game the Italians last night, yeah, maybe? Yeah, well... They, they, <laughs> I know that's the extreme example. They did do it at the back, but they didn't do it particularly forward going, going forward. But um, it's all about game management. And, and I think it's something that Danish always had to a certain extent because... I think it, it was always a very tough team. Once they go ahead, it's very hard to come back against them. But 
age might have something to do with it. I don't think they lost the game management, but obviously once you get older, we saw in the second half where Westergaard gets beat by pace from Spora. Mm. He just, it's only an eight-yard sprint. He, it, it took about four yards of him. And, and sometimes the decision-making can let you down. You might get a bit more tired a little bit earlier in, in games. And it looked that in the last 20 minutes, they just had nothing left. Yeah. And um, I think it's, it's certainly, especially for the Danish press and the public, I think it's, it's pretty worrying how the second half went because... If we look forward now a week, 10 days, with uh, England to play and Serbia for both teams, I probably fancy Slovenia more uh, to get more points out of these two games in Denmark. Yeah, it'll be very interesting when they meet Serbia mm. as well to see mm. how that game goes. Yeah. That'll, be, that'll be extremely tight. And Richie, when you consider that Šeško hit the post in, in that second half, they had a penalty appeal turned down. We'll have a look at these incidents in, in a short while. But Slovenia may be reflecting on that sec second half, thinking, wow, we possibly should have taken the three points. Yeah, we, 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 we spoke about Sporar and Seshko before the game at halftime. We spoke a lot about Sporar throughout the second <laughs> half. We were here commenting loads on Sporar. Yeah, and yeah. What, what let him down was his, his finishing, finishing, which is obviously the most noteworthy part of any centre forward performance. But, you know, his, his pace to beat Vestergaard, the anticipation there, the getting in the right position to volley, albeit wide from three yards or whatever it was. So there, there will be. Pleased that they created certain chances. Sporar will look at aspects of his performance and go, you know, I, I caused that defence trouble. I, I should have caused the goalkeeper more trouble. Didn't score, which is the, the, the main thing. But yeah, absolutely. They can look at that and say, we, we could have scored more than one. But I think in the balance, in the main, like the game wasn't just about the, the last 20, 25 minutes where they started to get on top. Over the piece, over the 90, 95 minutes, I, I think a draw was probably the fair outcome. Obviously... England will have a very close look at this match mm. when they get through their first assignments against Serbia. Is there anything in the performance of either Denmark or indeed Slovenia that England have to worry about? Because when you look at the squads on paper, I mean, England's mm. is peppered with talent right throughout. Mm. Not so much Denmark and Slovenia, certainly not to the same extent. Well, you've got to give them respect. You've got to take them serious. But I don't think uh, if they do look back, they would have had people in the stadium I don't think there's anything the scouts who ever watched the game today report back in that, to that England camp or the England manager uh, where England has to worry about. Uh, as you say, they are on paper, they are far superior to, to both teams. Um, and I don't think they saw anything um, uh, today they, they, they didn't know before. I think in the context of the group, I, I think England should be confident. England are in a very strong position, but they'll be pleased with that outcome because no one has three points. They've both dropped two points. But the, probably the most pleasing thing is the, the number of limitations that both of those teams displayed today. Like if you imagine, was, the point was made several times in commentary, how easy it was for Ericsson or others to just drift into positions in the middle of the park or behind the Slovenian midfield and pick up the balls in the space. And they weren't reacting, they weren't anticipating, they weren't closing them down. Can you imagine the damage Phil Foden can do? Or Cole Palmer, or yeah, Bellingham, yeah. or Kane dropping deep, Saka. You can keep going on with three or four more names. Those individuals, given that amount of space and the slow reaction or, or poor anticipation of Slovenians, and, and they're in a world of trouble. So 1-1 had finished in Stuttgart between Slovenia and Denmark. And Richie, we're going to have a look at that equalising goal. And it came at a very opportune moment for Slovenia because Sesko had just hit the post and then this followed. Yeah, Sesko just hit the post. Sporar had a chance just a couple of moments before that. But the, the technique of this strike is absolutely brilliant. You can see it, it's a, it, it breaks kindly to him on the edge of the box. It's a clearance from a Danish head. But Jancic just hits that. It is going on target. We don't know what Schmeichel would have done if it didn't get the, reflect, the deflection off Hulman. But absolutely nothing the goalkeeper could have done. It's hit so sweetly. Yeah. Absolutely lovely strike, lovely half volley. And just prior to that, uh, Diddy, you know, as I mentioned, Sheshko had hit the post and you felt, oh, yeah. it's just not going to break for them. And you do yeah. need a little bit of luck along yeah. the way. And while they got it with the deflection, it was yeah. deserved. No, it was. And, and, and again, you hit the post, you have a, a Spora missed a, a great chance to equalise. <laughs> and then it's easy to say, well, at least we tried, we had the chances and not going in. Um, not, not our day. But they said, no, no, we, we, we keep probing, we keep trying. Got a bit fortunate with the deflection, but um, yeah, it was very much deserved. Uh, a little bit earlier on in the half, Slovenia had a penalty appeal, a penalty claim yeah. 
turned down. What did you make of it? And I think our pal Sporar was at the centre of yeah, this once he again, was. was he? And credit to him because he always got himself in these positions, yeah. caused a lot of problems, his finish and let him down. Yeah, long throw comes in, it gets headed across goal. Um, and then Vestergaard boots Spora. But, you know, if you look at Spora now, he makes no intention, he's got no intention to play the ball. All he does is he wants to get across the defender here. He wants to get across the defender and in a way he wants to get booted, which he did. It's Anderson actually. Yeah. And if the if the forward makes no intention to play the ball, I don't think he should be given and rewarded with a penalty. And if we've got that situation in the Premier League and the Bundesliga, I think nine out of ten times we see a penalty given. A penalty given, yes, yeah. Yeah. And and I'm I'm very glad and happy they didn't give it because for me, as I said, the fact that Spora didn't make any or didn't have any intent of playing the ball, um, you know, um, uh, justifies the decision the uh, video system made. Yeah, does it uh, appear, Richie? It's common to sense. You? Yeah, yeah. And but... we don't, we don't use, we don't hmm. use common. We look at the rules. We said, oh, there's been contact, um, and we give a penalty. Yeah. And I think yeah. the biggest problem with VAR at the moment is that these penalties are given, and then yes. the referee says, well, if it's wrong. They're going to tell me. But then they look at it, the video assistant, and he says, well, there was actually contact. Yeah. So it's not a clear and obvious error. So let the game go on. If there's an offence or something that should be given, the assistant will tell you. But I was very happy and I'm glad that this penalty wasn't given. Yeah, we're, we're not going to get into a huge VAR discussion mm. right now, Richie, but it seems to be uh, interpreted far better in the UEFA competitions than it certainly does in the Premier League. And Didi has just mentioned that the Bundesliga is similar. So uh, why do you think there's such how a difference often, in terms of the interpretation? I know. How often do we say that? We get to international yeah. tournaments and say that it's, it's used effectively and relatively efficiently and quickly, and, and the outcomes are, are what they are. In England, we're scratching our head looking yeah. on it, how they can so consistently and so repeatedly be so frustratingly slow and sometimes inaccurate. Yeah. It's... Wrong. It's, a, it's a long, it's a long wrong. question. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, but as I said, it's not time words. for the VAR. There's a lot stronger words we could use. <laughs> but it's going well so far, it has to be said, at, yeah. at these Euros. Uh, we want to have a look at the, the Denmark chances now yeah. from that second half, and specifically the second one, Richie, because Jan Oblak makes a magnificent save, and that's key in this second half. It, it's, a, it's a huge moment. We spoke about him beforehand and his importance in this team, but you would have thought at half-time that the Denmark chances compilation of the second half should be plentiful, but this is more or less it. That's a brilliant ball from Christensen along the ball, along the ground. It's very difficult to defend. Hoyland is the one who was on the end of it. Oblak came out and made himself big and, and closed it down. I think Hoyland could have maybe done better, but superb save. And that was the that was the key moment. That goes in. We're not talking here about a point that Slovenia have picked up. Yeah, I suppose it's always worth stressing the importance of the goalkeeper because many yeah. times, Diddy, mm. it's ignored. But if you have a good goalkeeper, it is a significant platform to build on when you're trying to challenge for a championship. And he calms everybody down yeah. because they know if we make a mistake, if there's a shot on target, the big man will save it. Yeah. And, 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 and he did. And he was there when they needed him. And everything that came his way, he just, he just oozes confidence yeah. and calmness. And this is what he needed as a team, uh, especially as a team that's as inexperienced as... The Slovenians, most of them play the first tournaments. Obviously, he's, um, he's played plenty of big games in the Champions League and for, for Atletico in the league. Absolutely brilliant. But I also have to give a mention to Bio, the centre-back, who yes. plays for Udinese. Yeah. He was absolutely outstanding. He must have had 15 clearances in the whole game, everything that came his way. And he was a guy putting Hoyland under the pressure. Because I think Hoyland, if Bio isn't there, I think he lets it come across his body and then he can put it in the, in the corner. But I think he, he thought he had to take it early because if he doesn't take it early, he's going to come with a tackle and he's going to clear the ball. So, um, yeah, Biol and, uh, and Oblak, I think they give him so much confidence because they are real defenders and Oblak, when you need him, he's there. I mean, yeah. how many times have you seen a defender in that situation, like Biol did, end up inadvertently putting the ball into his own goal because your body position or you're late or you misjudge it, he did exactly the right thing. Yep, he had a good game, all right. Uh, let's have a look at the couple of chances that uh, Slovenia had from that second half. Uh, first of all, Cherin should have put this one away. Yeah, it's a good ball. It is it is our main sporter. He actually does really well, gets in on his stronger foot here, just dinks it into the into the danger zone in the mixer, and I think he's going to be a bit braver. I think he was a bit scared that the defender is going to going to headbutt him there. <laughs> um, and then it's a great ball by the goal scorer Jancha. Um, Spora probably has to do better. And this is the best of them all. Um, we didn't see an awful lot of, of him in the 19 minutes, but what we saw, 
uh, was two magnificent strikes. First one going inches wide in the first half, and this one, you know, hits a hits a post. I think the the goal shook for about two minutes. Uh, there, there was the ferociousness of the strike. Uh, brilliant player. Now you can say, well, he should be getting involved a little bit more. But um, you know, I think in the two or three situation we saw him, he showed what a, what a class act he is or can be. Mm. Yeah, but also, Richie, for any team, whether it be England or anybody else who are going to face Slovenia, with a player like Sheshko, who seems to be able to create chances out of nothing, always a danger that he could score in any game against any, any level of opposition. And, and I think that was one difference today. Between, and we're, we're comparing him and Hoyland a lot. They're very different players, but yeah. they're both kind of similar points of their career and they, uh, they hold the same position in either team. Like they're the young striker that a huge amount is, 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 is expected of them. Hoyland's not looking like a player that can create something from nothing. He's reliant on service. Mm -hmm. And the service there today was, 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 was fairly pedestrian or non-existent in the second half, whereas Seshko, he did in the first half as well. Like you said, create something mm -hmm. and, and like nearly scored two wonder goals. Yeah, uh, definitely liable to score during this tournament, that's for sure. One player who did score, uh, mm. probably at the other end of his career, uh, is Christian Eriksen, and it was a beautifully taken goal. It was. His influence waned the longer the game went on, but his first half performance was, was excellent. He was across everything that Denmark did well going forward. Um, it's, a, it's a throw in, Vins flicks off flicks the ball off and Eriksen reacts quickly, a lot quicker than any Slovenian defenders. You can sit here again and go over all the errors of defending that led to that goal being conceded, but for Eriksen, what a wonderful moment. In his still his comeback Euros game for Denmark at this level, brilliant story. Yeah, it certainly was. So, 1-1 one, one had finished in uh, Stuttgart. So, uh, both registered on the board in the early stages of this group and, of course, coming up very shortly, we'll be counting down to the Serbia-England game. But I was just thinking, uh, Diddy, you know, very important, you know, when you're going into a tournament like this to mm. uh, register something in your opening match because it means it's very much alive and it's very much alive for Denmark, it's very much alive mm. for Slovenia. So this group might be a whole lot tighter than many people might have predicted. Yeah, probably a bit more important for, for Slovenia because Denmark, as, as we said before, they've been there, they've done it, they've been to the semis three years ago. So they know they can cut it at the big stage, even though they've all gone a bit older now, maybe they're a bit too old now. But for Slovenia, they go to the tournament for, a, for the first time for, for all of these players last Euros 20 years ago, 24 years ago. You don't really know where you stand and you think, well, it's all right getting out of uh, the qualifying group. Yeah. And you've got to say the standard of the qualifying group with Finland and Kazakhstan wasn't the strongest. So they go there not knowing where, whether they belong there, apart from two or three players, obviously Sheshka and Oblak, two of them. Um, so to go there, to fall 1-0 behind, to concede another good chance or big chance through Hoyland and then come back create a chance, hit the post, maybe could have had a penalty, which obviously it wasn't, then score that goal, it'll give him an awful lot of confidence because they end the group now. Um, two more draws, obviously England will be a tough game, but if you beat Serbia, you go to the last 16 pretty much with four points. Yeah. Uh, maybe two points will be enough, probably not, but you never know. So, um, no, it was very important, especially for the Slovenians, to come out with something. It means that the group for them is going to go to the last day at mm. least because they've avoided defeat. Like they're next up against Serbia during the week. So they could be in this really, really fortunate position that a win against Serbia, a lot to do to get that. But mm -hmm. if they get that, then it, it doesn't really matter what they do in the final game against England. They'll have gotten four points. And I think you'd have to be very, very unlucky. There need to be a kind of bizarre set of results to create the tournament for you to get four points and for it not to be enough to carry you through. So it, it, it's a brilliant final. set of circumstances for Slovenia. So final in five days. Yeah. It certainly is. So 